Hi, I'm Keith Baxter, and this is a video to explain some improvements I've made in the Zen flute. Uh, but for people who don't know what the Zen flute is, let me start by explaining a little bit of what it is, how it works. Uh, and at the end of this video, I have some information if you'd like to build one yourself, and I'd encourage you to do that. Uh, so what is the Zen flute? It's basically a MIDI keyboard that you control with your mouth. It's a mouth theremin. That's one way of putting it. And it makes use of uh, a new protocol that MIDI has developed called MIDI Polyphonic Expression, MPE, uh, to produce what I think is a much more intuitive, uh, natural playing experience that most people should be able to pick this up and play something right away. So the idea behind this is essentially that of a Helmholtz resonator. For example, a cider jug or a wine bottle. And you can think of a Helmholtz resonator as being a mass spring system. There's a mass of air that moves in and out of the neck of the bottle, and it's being biased by the springiness of the air itself. So it's a distributed system, but it's essentially a mass spring system. How do you get this thing uh, vibrating? Well, you blow across the lip of the bottle, and you create a turbulence that's coupled to the mass and produces a sustaining positive feedback. The same idea is, uh, is underlies whistling. You have to basically purse your lips in order to create that resonance, that uh, couple turbulence, and that's hard to do for a lot of people. So how does the Zen flute work? The Zen flute basically gets rid of the uh, need to create that turbulence by adding a speaker, a small speaker, and uh, dri driving this at its resonant frequency. How do you know what the resonant frequency is? There's a little microphone right next to the speaker. and um, there's a couple ways to track the resonance because you're going to be changing that with your uh, changes in your mouth. Uh, one would be to basically perturb a sine wave going in there and to check and see how the sine wave amplitude or phase changes as you move about a center point. It turns out it's much easier than that though. You can just create a positive feedback path with an amplifier. As long as you get a 90 degree phase lag there, it will be self-sustaining uh, oscillation. And when you start the flute, Basically, it just pops a, a step function in there, a lot of frequencies, and gets itself ringing, automatically tracks your mouth volume, uh, mouth uh, volume and mouth frequency. Okay, so let's look at the hardware. Basically, um, this is the operating end. You should be able to look in there and see there's a, a little speaker and a microphone I just described. Uh, there's a cover that you can remove. I've got a couple versions of this, uh, so you can clean that. It keeps your mouth aligned. Uh, I have this one in a clear case, which I use to work out the dimensions. Um, basically, it's a piece of PVC from an aquarium shop that I've expanded at the end by heating it, press, pressing it over a wine bottle. It's got a button, uh, a joystick attached to a printed circuit board that you can see inside. The printed circuit board carries a Teensy microprocessor, which is uh, essentially an Arduino, a very small Arduino, very powerful. It has native uh, MIDI uh, characteristics connects to a USB cable that goes right into most DAWs. Um, you know, works with Ableton, which is what I'm using it with. So let me talk a little bit about the construction of the Zen flute. There's a printed circuit board. Uh, it contains a, a couple of amplifiers for the speaker and the microphone, and principally a carrier for that Teensy that I talked about. I think it's a Teensy 4.1. And that has native um, MIDI characteristics, so that can connect straight to a USB cable uh, that you use for programming it, and also can output the audio and, and uh, the MIDI commands that we're talking about to your DAW. So that's pretty straightforward. The tricky part is the mouthpiece itself. Um, and let me show you what that looks like. Here's an early prototype, and you can basically see the speaker and the microphone held in there. There's a little magnet to hold the, the mouthpiece uh, that I, I showed you earlier. Uh, and the important thing in this is that the speaker and the microphone be very close to your mouth uh, and that the speaker and the microphone, uh, which are positioned in this thing, be isolated from each other so there's no direct crosstalk. They need to be coupled to your mouth, not to each other directly. Now, the way I did that uh, in the production is I made a little silicon rubber mold that fits in there uh, and holds the microphone and the, uh, the speaker. Yeah, but you don't uh, need to do that if you're making just a few of them. You can probably just 
position those uh, and maybe against a piece of tape that you've put on here uh, and then caulk around it with uh, some silicon rubber or the like. So what exactly is the improvement? <clears throat> well, it has to do with a disconnect between the way the Zen flute operates and the MIDI protocol, at least as it existed before. The Zen flute produces a pretty much continuous pitch output, and MIDI is a quantized protocol that expects particular notes. Well, that's no problem. You just divide that frequency space into boundaries and say, okay, anything between here and here, say the geometric mean of these, I'm gonna call that a, an A, and uh, this I'm gonna call A sharp, and that's gonna be a G. So what's the problem there? The problem is that most players, including me, and I think uh, people who play instruments like violin and trombone, they, they rarely start uh, right on the correct note. They pull in. So they basically might start, they might actually start here, at least that's where I would start, and they hear the note and they pull it in very quickly. Sounds fine. The problem is when you've quantized it, if you start the note here, you actually get that G, and then very quickly you get an A, and that can be very disruptive because you're getting these note events from MIDI. And remember the old MIDI says, when I give you a new note, I'm going to give you a new attack, I'm going to give you a new delay, I'm going to give you a new sustain. So you get these unintended notes. Sometimes they sound like passing notes, but sometimes they just sound bad. Okay, so what's the solution? The solution is with MPE, if you hit, you start your note here, you push the button here, you've got the wrong note, you pull it in. So you, you end up with the same, relying on the same attack, the same delay and sustain, but you just pitch shift back up and it actually sounds a lot better. So it's a very small thing, but by pitch bending rather than initiating a new note, uh, it, it's much more it's much more fluid sounding, it's much more natural sounding. Okay, so I focus the camera on the tuner feature of the Ableton DAW, so you can get a rough idea of the sliding between notes and how that sounds. quick word about software. It is a work in progress, uh, but I've tried to comment it. I, it never seems to settle down, um, but I think it's pretty easy to get through. It's Arduino code, simplified C, uh, and I've uh, certainly available to help people who are looking at it and want to change it or improve it. Uh, the joystick right now is programmed to uh, put out MIDI um, commands. I think it's breath control, expression, and you can map those into a typical DAW to do anything you really want. So it's programmable outside of this. Uh, this button turns on the speaker and uh, initiates a, a MIDI note on command, which starts an attack um, if you want that. Otherwise, you just hold it down and you can play continuously. Um, at this point in time, MIDI channel 2 is unquantized MPE MIDI for people who are super good at pitch control. Channel three is uh, quantized. That's what I usually use. Four, five, and six track channel three. And you can use those to layer instruments on top of each other. Uh, and you can actually mix them by changing their volume using this uh, through a MIDI command that you can use in your DAW. Uh, seven, eight, and nine, I think that's the remaining channels, are basically harmonic uh, variations on channel three. So we've got the root, we have the third, and we have the fifth for a chord that would be appropriate for the note you're playing uh, that remains in the key that you're playing. And at this point, uh, it starts out in C major. That's something you can change in the program using the scale filter um, variable that's, you know, global variable near the top. Uh, you can also change th through a few that I've preset by pressing the joystick button down. So you think you go from C major to A sharp, and then the last press is chromatic which is crazy uh, hard to play in my opinion, but for people who really just don't want to be constrained, that's the thing to use. 
So let me uh, end with hopefully another piece of inspirational uh, playing. I can show you sort of what this can do.